Moving into the receiver room, this is where I struggled the most. Um, I think the Bills have just kind of, they're just throwing a bunch of darts and kind of seems like they want to assemble uh, like a bunch of wide receiver twos and threes and just kind of spread the ball around. Um, I think if we, I think if the team was focused on getting kind of that absolute number one alpha replacing Stefan Diggs one for one, we would have seen the move up in the draft. Um, and maybe that's something that we'll see happen in the future, um, just with kind of cap space being cleared up and whatnot. Um, but for this season, I'm kind of getting the impression that it's going to be, you know, like a committee approach and you know, come come June first when that Trey White money's freed up, maybe we see a pivot. Maybe we see Brandon Bean swing for the fences and try to get a trade done, something like that. Um, but with the numbers in the room right now, I I don't see that as very likely. Um, so currently on the roster, Curtis Samuel, Keon Coleman, Khalil Shakir, uh, Mac Hollins, Justin Shorter, Brian Thompson, Xavier Johnson, Chase Claypool, uh, Marquez Vale Scantling, uh, KJ Hamler, Andy Isabella, Tyrell Shavers, and Lawrence Keys. And I have the Bills keeping Curtis Samuel, Keon Coleman, Khalil Shakir, Mac Hollins, MVS, and one of the two between KJ Hamler and Andy Isabella. Um, so I'll start there. I think KJ Hamler has the higher upside, um, but just given kind of his injury history, um, I kind of see the path for it being Andy Isabella. I prefer KJ Hamler here just because I feel like Andy Isabella's had plenty of chances. Um, to kind of like display his skill set, you know, he's he's been in wide receiver rooms that were hurting for talent and hasn't really been able to latch on and and you know solidify himself as a as a roster lock, um, even at like that wide receiver five or six position. Um, so I have Camler, I'm sorry, Hamler staying there, um, and then some of these other guys. I think there's I think there's immense competition for that wide receiver, you know, six range, depending on, you know, how many they, they keep this year. I have I will say I I think Matt Collins is far from a roster lock. I think he was brought in. I think there's plenty to tap into there with a better quarterback. I think he provides special teams. I think he provides leadership. Um, but it's not like, you know, he's an irreplaceable player. Um, so I, I have him kind of up for a debate depending on what happens with the rest of these guys. Um, Justin Shorter is somebody that a lot of fans have been clamoring to see. The last time we saw him in the preseason, he was a disaster on special teams, and I, I think that's a requisite for, you know, rounding out this room. Um some of these other guys have been floating around our practice squad for a while in, you know, Brian Thompson and Tyrell Shavers, and they've made some impacts but haven't been able to kind of get over that hump. So is is this the year that they're able to do that? We'll see what it's looking like um, throughout training camp. Um, Chase Claypool, I, I don't know. For me, this is kind of a, a personal decision um, versus anything else. Um, look, in, in an ordinary circumstance, I could get bringing in a guy like Claypool. You know, he's he's got the draft pedigree. He has, uh, like, proven success in the NFL. Um, he, he's been there, he's done it, and he's kind of fallen off, um, fallen out of favor with a couple teams. And... In ordinary circumstances, I'm all for, you know, that low-risk, high-reward signing and 
you see if you can bring him into the building and get the best version of himself. And if it doesn't work out, whatever, we cut him. Um, personally, I I wouldn't have touched him. He didn't even cross my mind. Um, don't fully get bringing him in with everything I just said, you know, accounting for that. Um, I just feel like where you're at as a team right now, I don't think he's somebody that comes in and, you know, fits the culture that is so important in Buffalo. Um, I don't think he's a team first kind of guy. Um, you know, we, we saw him back in the day talking about how he was not getting the respect he deserved basically and that he was a top three or five, whatever it was, receiver in the league. And he was, you know, barely a top three receiver on his team. Um so maybe this is one that I have to eat crow and he comes in, he's, you know, highly motivated based on, you know, basically basically leaving the league and he was signed up to play for the CFL. Um, maybe that's kind of like his reality check and I'm completely wrong here. The one that always sticks with me is he was still in Pittsburgh and you know, they were running hurry up offense, two minute drill, and he got like this big first down and everybody else is scrambling to get back on the ball. And, you know, he's taking his time getting up and celebrating. And it's just that one has always stuck with me of like that. That's some stuff that's like high school football right there. You know, like you got to get back on the ball. You you hand the ball to the ref, you go line up, you don't toss the ball to the ref, you get the ball reset as fast as possible, and whether you're spiking it, running the next play, whatever, you're getting on the ball as soon as possible. And that one that one will always stick with me and bug me. Like I said, maybe he's coming in as a different player. For my personal taste, wouldn't have been where I made an investment, no matter how small it is. Um but I digress. 